The turbine toucan from FSD is a very difficult aircraft to fly well, particularly in normal operations where precise control is required, uh, most importantly on the approach and landing. Some of this is a consequence of FSX's inadequate or perhaps faulty modelling of the PT-6 turboprop engine, but the FSX niggles are compounded by this particular aircraft's extreme thrust to weight ratio, making it almost uncontrollable at times. In parts 1 and 2 we saw three particular niggles, which are the difficulty with very precise power control close to idle, the use of reverse thrust and that engine surge on startup. So in this part I'm going to show you how to mitigate these niggles, if not completely eliminate them, by setting your flight controls up with a bit of thought. To do this I'm going to use FSU IPC, and uh, if you want to set up your controls this way you're going to need a registered version which is going to cost you about 28 euros. Now you get the full user manuals with the free version of FSU IPC so you can make an informed purchase and I have to say the manuals can be quite intimidating. So we're going to use FSU IPC to do two different things. We're going to allow it instead of FSX to control the power lever. Uh, we're also going to program a single button on the yoke in a way that FSX doesn't let us do. Now I'm using the Cytec yoke and throttle quadrant so the details might be slightly different for your hardware, but the principles will be exactly the same. So let's get right into it and program the throttle. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to show you how to give over aileron control to FSU IPC, because the aileron control is very sensitive in this aircraft as well. Then we'll use the same method to program the power lever. So I'm going to assume you've got FSU IPC installed, and you're in FSX, and you've got a flight with the toucan loaded first thing you want to do is go into the control option screen and disconnect the ailerons from FSX. This is under the control axes tab and then bring up FSU IPC from the add-ons menu. Now you want to select the axis assignment tab and uh, click the profile specific checkbox. So the advantage of using a profile is I, I can reuse it if I get another turboprop. So if I buy let's say Lionheart's Quest Kodiak or the FSN air tractor when that comes out. Now I've already got a profile set up for this aircraft, but I'll, I'll create another one from scratch just to show you the process. Now if you can see the words move lever, you just want to wiggle the aileron so that the joystick's detected. On my setup this selects joystick 1 and axis X. You may have to click rescan and do that again if it picks up the wrong joystick. Next under type of action you want to select the first option which is direct to FSU IPC and then in the list below check the first box at the left hand side and select aileron from the drop down. So now we need to switch to the joystick calibration tab. This is a multi-page tab but the aileron control is on the first page under the main flight controls. Again click the profile specific box. Now you need to waggle the ailerons here and if you don't see the numbers changing you may need to switch back to the axis assignment tab and use rescan to detect the joystick again. Then switch back to the calibration tab and click the set button. Now this gives us three buttons to set the leftmost, the centre and the rightmost positions of the yoke or joystick. So click the centre one first and then move the yoke all the way to the left. Click the left one and then the same for the right. Now the important bit, click the slope button and uh, you'll see a scroll bar. If you move this scroll bar down a little bit you can see it selects a profile curve. You want to select one that's shallower in the middle so maybe two or three and this gives us a nice smooth aileron response that's less sensitive towards the centre position and more sensitive the further out we move. So now you can OK out of this and uh, drop back into FSX and try it out make sure it's working. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but uh, this time for the throttle. So back into FSU IPC, this time select the throttle axis. On my setup this is joystick 1 and axis Z. Again you want to choose the direct to FSU IPC button, and this time in the action list you want to choose throttle 1. Now switch to the calibration tab again, and click that little triangular next button to get to page 3, which is where you set the throttles up. So move the throttle lever to make sure the numbers under throttle 1 are changing, and if not, again go back to the axis definition tab and uh, redetect it. Now then, this is a very complex screen, but we're going to use a simple throttle here with only one axis and no reverse zone, so you want to click the set button. Click the no reverse zone checkbox at the top left. Um, notice that this removes the middle set button from the throttle one area. We could actually define two ranges on the throttle axis and uh, have a proper reverse zone, but this only really makes sense if we have hardware that supports that and, and really need something with a, a detente 
position somewhere in the middle of the range. Now I've just got a cheap Cytec throttle quadrant so I'm going to use the standard FSX way of doing reverse which we'll come on to in a minute. So move the throttle lever to the idle detente then move it just a little bit forward of that so the numbers just start to change and then press the left set button. Now move it all the way forward and then a little bit back again just so the numbers start to fall and press the right set button. This little bit of slack at each end just ensures that you've got access to the full range of the throttle setting even if the slider on your joystick is a little bit glitchy. Now again the clever bit, um, click the slope button and choose a slope with a flat bit at the start. Now because there's no centre position on this axis we only see half a slope here. I suggest you click the scroll bar down to about four. Now there's one other finesse we can do for the throttle and that's back on the axis assignment tab. So make sure the throttle axis is selected, again using rescan if you need to, and uh, put the lever somewhere towards the middle. Now then note the delta button and underneath it the value 256. Now this is the minimum step size that will cause changes in the power setting to be sent to FSX and uh, we want this to be a smaller value which will give us finer control. So click on the delta button, move the lever the smallest distance you can and then click the button again. If you get a value bigger than 256 just try all that again. Now you don't want it too small, occasionally you can get one if you're careful enough. There is a performance implication because then you're going to get lots of messages sent to FSX when you're changing the throttle. But anything smaller than 256 is better for our purposes. And that's it for the throttle, so OK out of here and uh, try it out. And so the last thing we need to do is set up reverse thrust. Now just a little bit about how FSX does reverse. When the throttles are idle, pressing whichever key is mapped to decrease throttle or decrease throttle quickly moves us into reverse and pressing the key repeatedly increases reverse thrust. Now usually we want to map one of these actions to a button on the joystick and with the maximum repeat selected. In the Cytec throttle quadrant, pulling the throttle back through the idle detente triggers a button click leaving it in this position repeatedly clicks the button. So we set this up in FSX under the buttons and keys control tab and uh, that's how we get into reverse thrust. And that's half the battle but to come off reverse thrust we need to move the throttle back through the idle position until it registers a slight increase and then pull it back to idle. Now on the Toucan this isn't enough because uh, as we come out of reverse that turbine is very likely spun up and it takes a while to spin back down and because the prop's in the alpha range when the power leaves the idle the aircraft shoots forward and might even take off. We have a solution which is we need to do a throttle cut followed immediately by one decrease throttle command which will put us very slightly into the beta range and the aircraft will just creep backwards very slightly if we hold it on the brakes. The problem is FSX can't automate this so we need to juggle two key presses and the power lever and in practice this is far too fiddly but we can automate it with FSUIPC. So if you open up FSUIPC again go to the buttons and switches tab click profile specific as before and then pull the throttle lever back into its reverse position. You should see button 20 selected on joystick 1 well that's what it is on my setup anyway. Now if you look to the right hand side of this tab you'll see we can set an action to be performed when the button is released. So we don't want to set an action when it's pressed because FSX takes care of that but when it's released, in other words when we come off reverse by moving the lever back to idle we can hang a function on there. And as long as we don't map anything to the down stroke of the button this won't affect what happens when we go into reverse so FSX will select that as normal. So to set a function on the key up event check the select for FSX control box at the top right and then choose throttle one cut from the drop down list at the bottom. Don't select repeat and then just OK out of FSU IPC. So we're not quite finished but uh, we need to get a bit down and dirty to do the last bit. Now we can assign multiple actions to a button with FSU IPC but uh, we can't do it in the user interface, we have to go and edit the INI file. So if you shut down FSX, bring up FSU IPC 4.ini in notepad, you can find it under your FSX slash modules folder. So you open up the file, you want to scroll down to the section headed buttons dot single turbo prop and look for a line like this. Now you can read all the details about what this means in the manual but for now all you need to know is U1 is a button up action on joystick 1, 20 means button 20, and C means it's a FSX command and 65967 just happens to be the command for throttle 1 cut. A 0 is a parameter for that control. And this was set up by what we just did in FSU IPC to set that button action up. But here's the thing, we can add as many extra lines as we want for the same button and these will be executed one after the other in the sequence that they appear. So all we need to do is add this line, uh, the 1 is just a sequential number, uh, then you've got another U1 
button up 20 and this time the C66635 is the decrease throttle command take my word for that and that is the solution to the reverse problem now simply the act of moving the lever out of reverse triggers a throttle cut and then puts us slightly back into reverse pitch just what we need so that's it this really just scratches the surface of what you can do with FSU IPC and uh, in my view it's well worth the money in this case it's made the toucan flyable which has got to be good news uh, as for the toucan itself it's uh, one of a kind aircraft perhaps the fact that it's so difficult to fly is one reason why it's worth having of course you can do outrageous aerobatics with it but uh, it's also IFR equipped and it makes a good aerial sports car you might say but how I would use it if you can master those landings it's going to make one absolutely awesome bush plane as always it's your decision it's certainly not a jump in and go aircraft by any means but uh, very cool and uh, certainly worth a look if you're up for a challenge.